Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Master of Life Weekend. My name is Scott Sudfin, and I'll be here for the course of the weekend to help you folks with any questions or problems you might be having. This time, if you please give a real warm welcome for Dick Sudfin. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. Thank you. Feel that LA energy already, huh? We are, we are in the penthouse of the Bayview Plaza in Santa Monica, California. Our view of the bay has been blocked out because we're taping here, but we're going to rock and roll all weekend, right? Right! right. <laughs> You've been conditioned too well. <laughs> okay. Um, LA energy is incredible. If you, you know, we travel all over the country doing this, but there is no place like conducting a seminar right here at home. It's never work. It's play down here when we do it here. So. Yeah! Yay! We have a few foreigners in the, um, in the room, though. Helen's given me a list. People from outside of California, which we're really glad to have, have you with us. We have six people from Arizona. We have about 250 people in the room, I guess, plus a good-sized support team and the video crew. And that was the maximum we could jam in. Uh, so with the exception of these few foreigners, you're all from California, <laughs> and I imagine from Southern California. We have six Arizonans. We have two from the District of Columbia. We have one. We all want to applaud ourselves when we get to <laughs> one from Nevada, four from New Mexico, I think four from New York, six from Ohio. Some, yay! Somebody told me you Ohio people got together as a band or a caravan and came out. Helen said, "Is that true?" <laughs> no. I'm glad I brought it up then. <laughs> Helen lies a lot. It's okay. Uh, two from Oklahoma, four from Texas, one from Virginia. The one from Nevada and the one from Virginia. Maybe we can get the two of you together. Huh? Okay. So a lot of you have come a long way. You came all the way out here from Ohio just for this, right? No, no. I didn't want my ego pumped up that much. No, no, we just happened to stop by, but... <laughs> what are you doing here, love? Uh, oh, you live here now? Oh, okay. Well, obviously you weren't part of the caravan then that, that came out. Oh, you're going to see them later. Okay. <laughs> okay. How many people in here... Let me ask a few of the basic questions I always have to ask. Uh... How many of you basically accept reincarnation? I'd like to see a show of hands if you... All right. Just about covers it. Huh? How many think you're in a den of weirdos? That you got... <laughs> That's way too many hands. Put those up again. <laughs> I don't think I'll express it that way anymore. How many of you don't believe in any of this stuff, but you just came to support the person next to you? Okay, leave your hands up. Here's one, two, three, four. Four. This one's not sure over here. <laughs> Five. You're really outnumbered. You realize that, right? We may convert you. <laughs> I would feel very disappointed if we didn't have a few people in the room that um, didn't buy any of this stuff. Usually what happens is that the person that brought you, those four or five of you that put your hand up, the person that uh, brought you is bound determined to convert you this weekend. <laughs> but it may be that you're going to hear something that uh, they're going to hear this sort of thing. It's going to work in reverse. So it's all right. Thank you for coming anyway. That was nice of you to do. Okay. Um, I have to start out basically, by th I think, by saying this. My communications are ultimately about liberation. They're about freedom and uh, the quest or the search for freedom. And when I, when I say that, I'm talking about freedom of the self and freedom from the self. And freedom of the self, of course, is, is literal freedom. We're talking about the type of freedom we experience here in this country. Um, the freedom to have a 
meaningful life than the freedom to escape from uh, the wrong kind of relationships to uh, oppressive environments and so on. But freedom of the self, freedom from the self rather, this is the freedom where we rise above our fears. And this is what real freedom is all about. And that's what we're going to be working on a lot this weekend is this concept of freedom from the self. Freedom from all of the fear-based emotions. Freedom from our own obsessions, I think would be a good way to, uh, something we need to add from our own addictions. Uh, let me backtrack a moment. Let me go back around. How many of you would like to, if you could know right now for absolute sure, what your purpose is in life, why you're here? How many of you would like to know your purpose? Keep your hand up a minute. Look around. Those of you in the front, take a look. Look around behind you. We even got the ones that, the four. <laughs> okay, well, God told me to come and tell you this morning. <laughs> she did. She said, get up, Richard, and get down there. Get down to Santa Monica and tell them why they're here. I think we all have the same purpose. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been involved in this work for over 20 years. And I'm convinced that we all share exactly the same purpose. And that purpose is to learn to let go of fear and to learn to express unconditional love. And when I say to let go of fear, of course, I'm talking about all the fear-based emotions. And that's a very long list of fears all the anger and the hate and the possessiveness and the insecurities and on and on and on and on and on. All the negativity. Now, we have, all of us, we have karma that we need to resolve. Sure. We're, that's what we're here to do. And we have dharma, D-H-A-R-M-A, -A, that we need to fulfill. Dharma is your responsibility to yourself and uh, to society. But in the process of living our life and resolving our karma and fulfilling our dharma, we're here to learn to let go of those fears and to learn to express unconditional love. Uh, unconditional love, now that's not romantic love, keep that in mind. That's, that's the acceptance of other human beings as they are, without expectations, without blame accepting people the way they are. And it's about compassion and service and I think a lot of other things. But that's your purpose, to let go of the fear, because that's what's keeping you here tied to the earth, is the fear. Until you can let go of those fears, you're going to end up coming back and uh, experiencing lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. I don't even think they're two things. I think maybe they're one thing hit me a while back. I've been talking about this for so many years, but I finally realized that when you purposely work to let go of the fear, you just automatically open to be able to express the unconditional love. And when you go out of your way to express unconditional love, usually you're letting go of fear in the process. So really maybe it's just one purpose, and it's one that we all share. Okay. I want to now share a self-creation system. Now, it's an eight-point system, and it's going to take a while. But when I say self-creation, basically what I'm talking about is creating your own reality, creating the reality that you want to live. So let's take it one point at a time, beginning with number one, which is clarity of intent. I've been conducting these seminars for many, many years and working with a lot of unhappy people, unfulfilled people. And the primary reason that people are not as happy and fulfilled as they want to be is that they do not know exactly what they want. They don't have clarity of intent. And sometimes, even when they think they do know what they want, they want it for the wrong reasons, or it's really not what they want when we press them on it, when we process them, they find out that that's really not what they want at all. So, this is the first day of the rest of your life. What do you want to do with it? 
what do you want to do with the rest of your life? If you don't know, if you don't have goals, you're making a very clear choice. And that choice is no choice at all. You're going to live your life just flowing down this river of destiny, what I call it, river of destiny, living your life as a result of all the past experiences, all your past lives, your lifetime up until now, all the programming, just simply uh, living as a result of that programming. What do you want out of your life? What are you going to be doing five years from now? Oftentimes I'll ask that question and, uh, and I'll get the answer. Oh, just about the same thing I'm doing today. And if that's your answer, I can guarantee you that you won't be disappointed when the time comes. You need goals. You need a purpose. You need some place to be going, and yet most of you probably do not have this. I'll have people tell me, well, I want happiness. Um, that's too abstract an answer. Usually what I find when I push that point is that they want an end to the unhappiness in their life, which is certainly within the realm of possibility and programming, but that's not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about what do you want to do with the rest of your life? In fact, what I'd, li I'd like to find out from you, how many of you in here would have to admit that you do not really know exactly what you'd like to do with the rest of your life? Let's see a show of hands. Okay, well, as we go through the seminar, one of the main things, of course, that all of you put up your hands, which was at least probably 85% of the room, what you need to be working on is finding the answer to that question. What do I want to do? And if you find it in this two days that we have together, you're certainly going to be well served. I think one of the reasons that people don't know what they want is because we are so fragmented. We are, in here, we're a crowd of contradictions. We have all of these sub-personalities within us that are constantly fighting with each other. They're, they're involved in a struggle for dominance. And yet to achieve an understanding of your true self, you must face these many facets of your personality, and that includes, of course, all of the sub-personalities. Through this awareness, it's a lot easier to develop what I call detached mind. Because what you can do is you, as these sub-personalities emerge, you can recognize them and you can detach from the undesirable ones. Instead of being absorbed by the, the sensations and the feelings and the thoughts and the desires, you can simply stand back and objectively observe them. And you can, hopefully you won't judge, you won't interfere. And with that detachment will come the ability to control or to eliminate these aspects of you, the aspects of you that simply are not working. I like to give them a name, the subpersonalities a name, and I, I have here in my notes the names of some of the more common subpersonalities that have come up in other seminars. Here's just a few. The attention seeker, the pleaser, the brute, the organizer, Mr. Macho, the bitch, the manipulator, the victim, the nag, the martyr, the prude, the clown, the inquisitor, the complainer, the braggart, poor little me, the know-it-all, and on and on and on and on. And of course, there are thousands of subpersonalities. But what I'd like to do now is to explore with a, with a process, with a technique that we've developed, to explore a couple of your subpersonalities and then to explore another realm of reality that I think will serve you very well. So we're going to do our first session here with the screen. Now, for those of you watching this at home on the video, I you'll be watching your television set. For those of you here with me in the room, you're going to be watching the large screen. And what I want you to do is to simply blank 
your stare or your gaze at that screen. Don't focus tightly on the screen. Just soft focus as you look at the screen. The effect is one of drawing you into the screen. It's like going down the rabbit hole. Now, I want you to breathe deeply as preparation for watching the screen. This is a matter of taking a very deep breath in, holding the breath for as long as you comfortably can, and then letting it out slowly through slightly parted lips. This allows you to retain the moisture in your mouth while you're letting the breath out. And when the breath is all the way out, contract your stomach muscles and push it even further out and further out. And then repeat the process. Now this will slow you down, it will relax you. Anytime you're tense or anxious in any way, just try some of this deep breathing and you'll see that you quickly relax. All right, the rest of the process is self-explanatory. I'm going to relax your body one part at a time. I want you to play the role, play the part, feel your feet relaxing as I ask you to do so. Feel your body letting go. Mentally send the signal to your feet. Relax feet. Relax lower legs. Relax upper legs. I'm only going to partially relax you here at first and we'll go into the processing. All right. You are now perfectly comfortable and it's time to begin to watch the screen. Soften your focus and keep your eyes on the center of the screen. Breathe deeply and relax completely. Breathe deeply and relax completely. Take a deep breath in and hold it for as long as you comfortably can. And then let the breath slowly out through slightly parted lips. And when you think the breath is all the way out, contract your stomach muscles and push it even further out and further out. Then repeat the process. And as you do, you feel yourself just begin to let go and relax. 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 You're breathing deeply and relaxing completely and allowing the quietness of spirit to come in. Slow down your thought. When external thoughts come into your mind, simply brush them aside and return your attention to the screen and the sound of my voice. As you breathe deeply and relax completely. Breathing deeply and relaxing completely. So relaxed and so at ease. So relaxed and so at ease. And in just a moment, I'm going to begin to relax your body one part at a time. And as I do, you can accelerate the process by mentally sending relaxing signals to that part of your body. So let's begin now with the toes of your feet and the relaxing power is coming into the toes of both of your feet at the same time. It's moving right on down into the ball, into your arches, into your heels, and right on up to your ankle. Completely relax, completely relax. Now feel the relaxing power moving up your legs to the knees. Relaxing all the muscles as it goes. Moving on up your legs now to your thighs and to your hips. 
permeating every cell and every atom. And the relaxing power now comes into the fingers of both of your hands. Feel your hands relaxing. And feel the relaxing power move on up into your forearm. Relaxing your forearm. And on up now into your upper arms, just completely relaxing your upper arms. And your fingers and hands and forearms and upper arms. And now, just completely relax. And the relaxing power now moves on down into the base of your spine. Feel the warmth in the base of your spine and feel it begin to move very slowly up your spine, up your spine, up your spine and into the back of your neck and shoulder muscle. And the back of your neck and shoulder muscles are now loose and limp, loose and limp, just completely relaxed. And the relaxing power now moves on up the back of your neck and into your scalp. Relaxing your scalp. Feel your scalp relaxing. And it's now draining down into your facial muscle. Your eyes are relaxed and tired and heavy. But you keep them open and focus softly upon the screen. Your facial muscles are relaxing. Your jaw is relaxed. Allow a little space between your teeth. And your throat is relaxed. Your entire body is now relaxed all over in every way and all tension is gone from your body and mind. And as you continue to watch the screen, I want you to imagine yourself going into the screen, into the screen, into the screen. As you go down, 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 deeper and deeper into a relaxing level of mind, deeper and deeper as I count backwards from seven to one, letting go of the physical and going down, down, down into receptive metal realms number seven deeper 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 down 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 number six deeper 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 down 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 Number five, deeper, 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 down, down, down. Number four, deeper, 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 down, down, down. Number three. Deeper, 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 down, 
down, down, number two, deeper, 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 down, 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 number one. And you were now very open and receptive. Your body is going to sleep, but your mind is awake and alert on all levels. We are removing the filters that normally separate you from subconscious and superconscious awareness. And you were deep. But let's go down even deeper. Number seven. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Down, down, down. Number six. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Down, down, down. Number five. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Down, down. Down, number four, deeper, 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 down, 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 number three, deeper, 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 down. Deeper, 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 down, 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 number one. And you are now very, very deep. And I want to give you a self-releasing suggestion. If at any time you desire to awaken to full beta consciousness, Simply count yourself up from one to five and say the words, wide awake. You're in control and can awaken yourself at any time. And now, as new impressions appear, continue to focus softly upon the center of the screen and take a deep, deep breath. And as you let it out slowly, Imagine your body relaxing as it's never relaxed before. And you are now relaxed and at ease and centered upon achieving your goal. You are at peace and feel in balance and in harmony. A quietness of spirit permeates your body and mind and you are open to awareness that will assist you to better understand yourself. Now everyone has a multitude of sub-personalities within them. We are all a crowd, for within us lies the rebel and the martyr, the judge and the child, the builder and the destroyer, each with its own mythology and crowded into one person. And often your subpersonalities are not at peace with each other. Usually they are involved in a struggle for dominance. So, the first step is to recognize your primary subpersonalities because you can't change or control what you don't recognize. So to begin, think now of one of your primary personality traits one that you are not especially fond of. Do this now.
imagine an image emerging to represent this part of you. It could be male or female, an animal, elf or fairy, a monster, a graphic symbol or anything else. Now let this image just happen. Don't consciously attempt to form it. And once the image has taken fantasy form, give it a chance to express itself without any interference or judgment on your part. You can even create a thought language discussion by sending it a thought and then listening as that thought comes back to you as an answer in the form of a returning thought. So do this now. with the feelings that emanate from this subpersonality and give the subpersonality a name. Time to think back and to become aware of when this particular aspect of you emerges. Who or what causes this subpersonality to assert itself? identify any particular fear associated with this subpersonality. Remember, some of the primary fear-based emotions are anger, selfishness, jealousy, repression, greed, possessiveness, envy, guilt, insecurity, egotism, resentment, and blame. So go ahead now and identify any particular fear associated with this subpersonality.
Let's explore one more subpersonality. So again, think of one of your less desirable primary personality traits. Now, once again, imagine an image emerging to represent this part of you. It can be male or female, it can be an animal, elf or fairy, a monster, a graphic symbol or anything else. Let this image just happen. Don't consciously attempt to form it. And once the image has taken fantasy form, give it a chance to express itself without any interference or judgment on your part. And again, go ahead and create a thought language discussion by sending it a thought and then listening as that thought comes back to you as an answer in the form of a returning thought. Do this now. Now get in touch with the feelings that emanate from this subpersonality and give the subpersonality a name. and to become aware of when this particular aspect of you emerges. Who or what causes this subpersonality to assert itself? Can you identify any particular fear associated with this subpersonality?
you may have many additional sub-personalities, and you can use this processing technique to explore these all on your own. But now, let's explore a way to deal with your fragmented totality. I accept that as we evolve, spiritually evolve, we move deeper and deeper into our center. And at our center, we make contact with the collective unconscious. This is the God love. And when we evolve to our center, we touch God. And we come to know that in being part of God, we are God. And there's something else that emanates from our center. And that's joy. So, there's a very simple way to integrate yourself. All you have to do is to do only that which you enjoy. What would happen if no matter what it was, if you didn't enjoy it, you didn't do it? Now think about that. If you only do what you enjoy, you'll remain centered at all times. Don't direct your precious energy to anything you don't really enjoy. If you realize you're doing something you don't enjoy, just stop. You stop doing it. You say, hey, it's over. I don't enjoy that. I don't do that. To do what you don't enjoy is torture. It fragments you and causes your sub-personalities to begin fighting among themselves. So, just stop it. Don't do it unless you enjoy it. Now, I'm sure you're already resisting the idea. You're sitting there saying, sure, sure, what a dumb idea. And if you are, you're limiting your options. And if you're doing that with me, I'll bet you limit all your options in life. But now, on this occasion, give this option a moment for exploration. Meditate upon the idea of doing only what you enjoy. And I'd also like you to think about the things you'd stop doing. Maybe we're here on Earth to learn that life is what we make it. And it's to be enjoyed. the power and ability to create any reality you want to live. You can change what isn't working and manifest what you desire. And on the count of five, you will awaken remembering everything that you just experienced. Your head will be clear and you'll be thinking and acting with calm self-assurance, feeling glad to be alive. And you'll feel at peace with yourself, the world, and everyone in it. So number one, you're coming on up now. Feel the lifeblood returning to your arms and legs. Number two, you're coming on up and at peace with all life. Number three, coming on up and you sense an inner balance and harmony. Number four, recall the situation in the room. 
And number five, wide awake, wide awake. Open your eyes and feel good. Number five, wide awake. Okay, the idea now, with these subpersonalities, and I hope you'll do some more of this at home, on your own. There's, there's going to be at least six or eight, probably, major subpersonalities that you would just as soon not be part of your totality. But recognize them when they come up. And step back. In your mind, step back and say, well, that's not me. The mighty one needs to express herself. Or the prude needs, obviously, to express herself. Or, well, here's the bitch. I'm not the bitch. It's the bitch. Start to disassociate with those subpersonalities that, uh, that do not work for you. Don't get pulled into all of the sensations and the feelings and the emotions. Just stand back and detach and let, let it happen. Let it express. The more you do this, the more you'll be able to cut the ties that exists between you and this subpersonality. I don't like the idea of anyone controlling anything, so I don't even know if I want to say that you control that part of you. It's just really uh, detaching from it. So it's no longer affecting you, and it no longer is part of your life. And, and I can speak from my experience on this, of how effective it's been. So anyway, okay. W that was a long way to, in looking at the um, self-creation system, number one, clarity of intent. And hopefully the subpersonalities, through understanding that, can help you also to attain some clarity. Let's continue with this until it's time to take a bathroom break in a few minutes. Um, Self-creation. What's the next thing we would do to create your own reality, to create the life you want to experience? Um, very high on this list has to, has to be belief. I think all of the brain-mind researchers, the hypnotists, and the human potential trainers would agree that it is our beliefs that are creating our reality. It's that simple and there are no exceptions. It's our beliefs that are gener generating our thoughts and our emotions which are creating all of our experiences. Beliefs. You create your own reality with your beliefs, period. Maybe a few people wouldn't agree with that, people like Nathaniel Brandon maybe. But he's not looking at the concept of belief within a perspective of reincarnation, multi-lives within the framework of karma. Sure, some of it's got to go back to your past lives. Uh, a lot of your beliefs, the beliefs that you have right now, are based upon things that have happened in past lives. If, we were to, if I were to hypnotize you individually and say, let's go back to the cause of this belief, you might very well go back to uh, a, what we would call a cause event in a previous incarnation. But still, it's your own thoughts that have created those beliefs. It's your experience. It's you. Karma is self-inflicted. And so if you want to rise above karma, you have to forgive yourself. Self-inflicted, self-forgiveness, that's how we resolve it. So it's still going to come about as a result. Any change will come about as a, as a result of you changing your thoughts about yourself. So we're back to beliefs. Creating your own reality with your beliefs. If you're not 100% happy with your life, then you're going to have to change your beliefs. That's all there is to it. Beliefs aren't hidden either. You know, our, our, our memories of, sub, of past lives are hidden way down here in the subconscious mind, sure. But our beliefs aren't hidden. Our beliefs are right out in front, except we don't explore beliefs normally. We, uh, I think the primary reason we don't explore beliefs is that we've accepted them so long ago as facts, we don't even challenge them anymore. And it's my experience that there are very few facts in your life. Maybe a fact that it's daytime, but there are very few things in your life, very few factors that are that clear cut. Most of it is belief. It's created everything in your life. As I said, it's, it's easy to recognize religious and political beliefs, but it's a lot harder to pin down beliefs about how, who, and what you are relate to your life. But everything in your life goes back to beliefs. Your health, the fact that you are healthy or the fact that you're not healthy. 
uh, your relationships. The fact that your relationships work or they don't work or that you have some or you don't have any. Your job, your career, your level of success, your, the whole thing. It all goes back to beliefs. And as I often tell in these seminars, because it made such an impression on me, I guess, a little over a year ago, we were out going across the country on a, um, doing 21 cities at a time from coast to coast and back again in a Silver Eagle entertainer bus. And one of the first cities, this woman stood up and she, we were talking about belief. She was very overweight. She put her hands on her hips. And she said, Richard, I'm overweight because I overeat, not because of my beliefs. And, uh, of course, my reaction to that is if you change your beliefs, you change your programming, you change your weight. The tapes that I make, I, I have tapes for everything, right? We have 350 tapes, I think, now. And so do a lot of other people. We were the first people to come up with tapes back in 76, but there's at least 200 companies out now, now that have these tapes. What do they do? Hypnosis, meditation, sleep programming, uh, goal programming, uh, subliminals, all of it. They're all structured to do one thing, and that's to change your beliefs. Change your beliefs. So, you want to change your weight? want to change your level of success, want to change anything in your life, let's start to create a new reality. And programming is certainly an important place to begin. Uh, but there's, there are other factors here. In fact, I asked this woman who was standing there glaring at me, uh, I said, what, what do you feel when you look at a, uh, another woman and she's got just a perfect body? <laughs> and she didn't hesitate for a moment. She said, all beauty and no brains. <laughs> okay. There's a, there's a universal law, I think, that says you cannot become what you resent. So, you're always going to live up to your own self-image. That's automatic. Everyone in here will always live up to their self-image. So if you feel that if you're going to attain this perfect body, you're brainless, you're not going to allow it to happen. And of course, I realize that's stretching a point, but this is how belief works. One of my favorite ways is to, to, uh, to bring it back to something everyone, I think, can relate to very quickly. I'll finish this sentence in your mind, if you will. I think wealthy people are... How'd you finish it? <laughs> Assholes, somebody said? <laughs> oh, good. I always knew. Snobs, I heard. Lucky, lucky, I heard. I had somebody here a while back say, they stole the money. Uh, what, who else had something negative? Obnoxious. Okay. Obnoxious. Snobs. What was that? Crooks. Oh. Freeloaders. I hope you're getting the point. You cannot become what you resent. Now, it just is not going to happen. If you think that to be wealthy it means to be a crook, or to be a snob, or to be an asshole. <laughs> You're not going to allow yourself to attain wealth. That's all there is to it. It will never happen. What happens when you're sitting there at the stoplight in your Toyota, and the guy drives up beside you in the Rolls Royce, and you look over? What do you feel? <laughs> look at the emotion in the room all of a sudden. <laughs> Well, you know what you feel, and we could make an all-day process out of it, obviously. If you feel negative, if your reaction is, eh, guess what you are never, ever going to have? 
your belief about having a Rolls Royce is negative. And so you cannot possibly allow yourself, if you're going to live up to your own self-image, to have the Rolls Royce. You might say, hey, I want to make a lot of money, I want to do this and that. But if that's the core belief down here, you won't allow it to happen. It's that simple. You can't possibly allow it to happen. If you don't want one, will you get one? No, I don't think it's going to work quite that way either, honey. <laughs> That'd be real easy. I don't want a Rolls Royce. Gee, I bet I get one in a month. <laughs> so then take it out of that. What, if you, what about when you drive through the section of town where the homes are really nice? You know, what is your reaction? I hope it's not. And wh why does the Rolls Royce generate such a different reaction from you? Personal. Okay. If you think he put people, you know, this, it, the whole gamut, belief. If you think that people can't be trusted, then you probably have an awful lot of encounters with untrustworthy people. If you think that, uh, if you believe you can only attain limited success, if that's your belief, then guess what? That's as far as you're going to go. You think sex can only be this good? It's only that good. That's right. That's right. If you think nobody can have an ideal relationship, you're not going to have an ideal relationship. If you believe that circumstances are beyond your control, then I'm sure more often than not they're beyond your control. Our disharmonious beliefs are like walls. And they surround us, and they restrict us. And yet, more often than not, we don't even realize they're there. And until we recognize that we are not free, we're not going to do anything about it. We're not going to ever generate the change. Okay, let's carry on the, uh, the idea of self-creation. Um, done the first couple of points. Step number three would be to accept karma. Karma. To accept it as your philosophical basis of reality. And in so doing, of course, you accept self-responsibility. Um, karma would say that you and you alone are responsible for absolutely everything that has ever happened to you. So, obviously, there's no one to blame. If you accept the idea of reincarnation, then there, you have to drop the idea of blame. Doesn't work. Reincarnation, the basic, the premise says that you come back again and again and again to, uh, to resolve the things that you need to resolve. There's no one to blame. You created what you need to experience. So, you can call it karma, you can call it cause and effect, whatever you want. Uh, point number three is really simply amounts to accepting responsibility for your life. It's time to stop blaming other human beings. Uh, you've created your reality. If you can't accept karma, then look at it from a human potential perspective. The whole idea that playing the part of a victim and blaming others and your circumstances is useless resistance. and it's self-pity. Blame is self-pity. So, accept responsibility for your life. Number three. Number four is to accept what is, is. I've been studying the concept of what is for 15 years, 20 years, more. And I'm still learning about it, even though it's, it's really a pretty simple idea. There are some things that you cannot change. These are facts. You can't change them. So don't waste your energy attempting to do so. Now, if there's something you can change, do it. That's great. But what I see, it's Buddha. If you, if you were to summarize Buddha's teachings, and that would be very difficult to do because of the wonderful, wonderful teachings that he left us, but if you could, I think it would have to be the line that says, it is your resistance to what is that causes your suffering. Buddha said that. It is your resistance to what is that causes your suffering. So stop resisting what is. 
change the things you can change. Do not resist the things you can't change. Um, there's a Christian prayer that really says the same thing. I called my mother a while back and said that, that Zen prayer you have above your couch, would you read it to me? Because I didn't have it. She says that's a Christian prayer. She thought I w she was making headway, that maybe I'd seen the light, I guess. When <laughs> you all heard it many, many a time. It says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's, that's really the idea of accepting that what is, is. The place where I see people being unwilling to accept what is, is in other human beings. You want somebody else to be the way you want them to be. And you cannot change another human being. Not lasting change, not meaningful change. You might say, if you don't, if you don't stop doing that, I'm going to leave. And they might stop doing it for a while, but chances are that they'll start doing something that's more obnoxious. So it won't work. You can't, it's repression. You can't repress for very long. Uh, it'll, it'll always come up in one form or another. It'll always come up. So, okay, that's number four. We'll get back to that in just a moment. Number five. Step number five. I'm talking about eight steps here to self-creation. What happened to two and three? We'll cover those at lunchtime <laughs> if you miss them. Step number five is what I call conscious detachment. In Zen, if you study Eastern ideas very much, you'll find that they're, they talk a great deal about detached mind and attached mind. Attached mind is what most of the world experiences every day. The person with attached mind experiences all the love and the joy and the happiness and all the good stuff. But as outside conditions change, they can move from all that good stuff down through neutral all the way into the basement of emotions, which is going to be anger and desire for revenge, hostility, all the negative stuff. So in other words, your life really ends up being like this. The Zen goal has always been detached mind. The idea that you enjoy all the good stuff, all the love and the joy and the fun. But as outside conditions change, you fluctuate only to neutral. You do not sink down into the basement of anger and hostility and all that stuff. The idea is to allow the negativity to flow through you without affecting you. It's been on the masthead of our magazine since the day we started that magazine about 13 years ago. Allow the negativity to flow through you without affecting you. A lot easier said than done, obviously. But again, we need a goal if we're going to change. So, as an example now, so that you really get it, um, here you are, you've come to this nice spiritual seminar. You parked your car down there, valet parking, right? They parked your car for you. But they smashed it up, you see. Just obliterated the side of your car. And they're going to claim they didn't do it. And that's what is. Hmm, now, how could that be? You came to a spiritual seminar and that happened. But now you've got two choices in how you're going to respond. You can respond with attached mind and you can get all upset and you can scream and yell and moan and groan and threaten to sue the hotel and carry on, drive your blood pressure through the roof, and probably tell everybody that you know for the next three weeks what happened. You were spiritual, they wrecked your car, oh. You're laughing because you know that's what you would do, see? <laughs> or you respond with a detached mind and you say, all right, I don't want to have to deal with this, but I guess I have to deal with it. And you do so as quickly and efficiently as you can and you do not get caught up in it and you do not add to the, to the negative energy. Now, the outcome is the same. Logically, think about it. The outcome is exactly the same. You still have to deal with getting your car fixed. One way you've made it worse, because our mind operates like a computer. 
Remember back the mid-50s when Maxwell Maltz first started writing about psychocybernetics? The brain-mind research people first started realizing that this is really a computer up here. It operates just like a computer. You feed it negativity, you get back negativity. G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. It's a term I hear at, at my office where we have a lot of computers we're always dealing with. So, do you want to make it worse? Add to the negative program? If you feed it negativity, you see, you have to experience negativity as a result. Cause and effect. Call it karma. Call it cause and effect. Call it whatever you want. If you feed in negativity, you will get back negativity. If not today, then next week or next month or next lifetime, but it will come back. We have somebody in the back that really wants to share, so if we could hand her a microphone. I'm sorry, I can't help it. You see, this actually happened to me. I was on my way to the seminar, the last seminar you had. Me and my friend were coming, and a guy, obviously drunk, pulls out in front of us with no lights, totals my car, and runs off across a field and has never been caught. And the first thing I do, I get out of my car, and I see what's happened, and I go, oh, well. And that's what is. That's, mm. that's what I was thinking. I just... Just only because... What, did you take... The seminar works for you, huh? I swear, it does. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't been coming here, but I just figured, well, balanced karma. I was even able to send the man light, and even though yeah. the insurance company, you know, they try to stiff you whenever they can, but even that's working out. <laughs> and now I've, I've even got a nicer car with lower payments, and everything has worked out fine. The universe was supporting you. Yeah. There's always a gift. In, in the worst of circumstances, there is a gift if you, can, if you can look for it. Every single one of us is programmed to need to be right. Now, that's absolutely what is. Our subconscious mind, what we know about it as a computer, it's a computer, okay? Computers are programmed. Man, it's a lot of transistors and wires and boom, boom, boom. They'll do exactly what they're programmed to do. Well, your computer and my computer has been programmed to get to be right because we've survived. It, do it doesn't think, but it has set into it a goal, and that goal is survival. So no matter what we encounter in life, the computer is going to run it through its files. Literally, you've gone on tilt. You cannot function any further until you get to be right. Now, people who are attempting to manipulate you with sales, boy, do they know this. They let you be right. Say, well, yeah, I understand how you feel. That's a good way to take somebody off tilt right there. I understand how you feel, yeah. Ooh. Let the other person be right. Then at least they can be open to listening to, to what's happening. But the goal is to win the game. Win the game. Let the other guy be right. Friend of mine, I was at their wedding. I was part of their wedding. I, I just love both people, the man and the woman. They've been together for uh, quite a few years now. But I have never seen a guy who needs to be right so much in my life. He was constantly putting her down every time he sh she said anything that he didn't think was right. And so what's happened right now, they are in process of divorce. He doesn't want a divorce. He got to be right for about eight years. And now he's losing the game. And so, maybe just keep in mind that uh, it might be wise to let the other guy be right. Let me win the game. We know when we're pushing somebody else's buttons. We know when we're creating something that's going to be a scene, that's going to get somebody else going. And the same thing in reverse. They do it. Pretty soon it becomes just relationships. Just become push yours, push mine, push yours, push mine. Back and forth until it disintegrates. and You part. And then you'll come up, and I know from my own experience, because I sure had to go through it, then you get together with someone else and you do it again, maybe. Maybe again. Till you finally get that you cannot manipulate other human beings. So you've got to let other, everybody be free to be who they need to be. They're not here to answer to you and you're not here to answer to them. And if you can come together and share that wonderful idea, why? Well, great. But until then, your road's going to be rocky. It's going to be very rocky. Any questions or comments on this? Anything... Anything more there? Right here. I just wanted to say well, that um, sometimes if you let go and let the person do what they're doing, 
because after all it's their problem they're responsible for it yes eventually they get to the point of trying to resolve it themselves yes I mean even if they're doing things you know is dangerous to their health and you love them and of course you're concerned you have to let them have that responsibility to do it because until they make up their mind to do it they will never be successful right the thing is that you can change and then they're responding to a changed person and then they may change naturally you can change. You can always change your own life. And realize that the moment you stop being the person who's bitching at them and is always the antagonist and become a supportive person and say, I love you, I care, I don't want to see you do this, but I'm not going to harp at you anymore, I don't want to hurt, then they're going to change towards you, and that will be a natural change. But try to force it. It will never happen. Yes, back here. Please stand. Hi, I just want to say it really does work because the other day I was really, really afraid. We have this bank account, <laughs> and my husband's always trying to get inside of it. And I decided, <laughs> well, you know, I'm just going to let you have it because I'm tired of being the one that says, no, we can't buy this, no, we can't buy that. You wanted to save for this, and now we can't save for it anymore. So I just said, okay, fine. I went out in the backyard, and I looked at him, and I said, Danny, you know, that money's in there and it's both of ours, and we can do whatever we want with it. If you want to go buy a boat, go buy a boat. If you want to buy a gun, go buy a gun. I don't really care no more because I don't want to say yes or no anymore. If you want to make the decision and do it, go do it, and if you don't, don't. Well, what ended up happening was really weird because what I wanted to do with the money was I wanted to invest it into something. And what ended up, ha which he never knew, okay, because he wouldn't let me get to that point. And so what ended up happening was later on that after, I just left it alone at that, and I just told him, I said, I'm really afraid. I don't really want to go out and just spend this money on all this stuff that you want to buy. I like the security it, it gives us. And what ended up happening was he ended up walking in the house and saying, Linda, why don't you take that money and go invest it in some T-bonds? <laughs> and it ended up doing... Huh? He ended up doing what I wanted him to do all along and have been trying to figure out how to get him to do for like three years. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good story. Okay, let's, let's go on with the, um, with the self-creation system, the idea. Um, number six, point number six, very quickly, is viewpoint. Reality exists is that what you experience? Obviously. The way you experience life is based solely upon the way you choose to view what happens to you. And we can have the same thing happening to you and the same thing happening to you. You might view it as an opportunity and see it in a very positive way. This person over here might see it in a very, very negative way. Um, so viewpoint. You are always choosing how you're going to view your experiences, whether you're going to view them harmoniously or disharmoniously. And no one probably talks about that better than Viktor Frankl, a Jewish psychologist, psychiatrist uh, from Vienna who was in a Nazi death camp in World War II, and he talks about how the survivors could still see the light at the end of the tunnel. They could still see life as a tranquil oneness opposed to this hostile separateness and those were the people who survived the people who just felt that there was no meaning left to life and that it was simply a hostile separateness these are the people who died we are choosing how we will view our experiences and can you know everyone in this room is doing okay and yet a high percentage of this room still doesn't view life harmoniously you're not viewing the events in your life in a positive way. Can you imagine being in a situation of a Nazi death camp, Auschwitz, and still remaining positive? But we're choosing. We're choosing it. Okay, what I'd like to do at this time is a process that we did not do before lunch. Um, this is a process about consciously detaching. Now we've had some good examples come up in the sharing. And what this really amounts to is I'm going to put you into several situations. A lot of them are situations that I've been in myself. And uh, I want you to react to these situations. Um, 
First of all, I want you to react the way that you would normally react. Here you are, you encounter the situation, your reaction is, what are you going to do? Then, I'd like you to catch yourself once you're in tune with how you would normally react. And if you've reacted negatively, I would at least like you to consider how you might react in a positive way. In other words, with conscious detachment. Allowing the negativity to flow through you without affecting you. And what I found that this does, this just simply sets into your mind very, in a very powerful way the things that we've talked about up until now. Because you have to use those concepts in these situations. And I'd like you to do it in an altered state of consciousness because in an altered state you tend to focus your attention down upon just one thing first. Also, you open, it's a matter of, I think, bringing, removing the filters that normally block access to the subconscious memory banks, and so it allows stuff to just bubble up out of your subconscious, out of your unconscious, much more easily. So, it's a value to explore this sort of a thing in an altered state of consciousness. So, I, I'm just going to go ahead and move us right into the process, which won't take very long. You are now perfectly comfortable, and it's time to begin to watch the screen. Soften your focus and keep your eyes on the center of the screen. Breathe deeply and relax completely. Breathe deeply and relax completely. Take a deep breath in and hold it for as long as you comfortably can. And then let the breath slowly out through slightly parted lips. And when you think the breath is all the way out, contract your stomach muscles and push it even further out and further out. Then repeat the process. And as you do, you feel yourself just begin to let go and relax, relax, relax. You're breathing deeply and relaxing completely and allowing the quietness of spirit to come in. slow down your thought. When external thoughts come into your mind, simply brush them aside and return your attention to the screen and the sound of my voice. As you breathe deeply and relax completely, breathing deeply and relaxing So relaxed and so at ease, so relaxed and so at ease. And in just a moment, I'm going to begin to relax your body one part at a time. And as I do, you can accelerate the process by mentally sending relaxing signals to that part of your body. So let's begin now with the toes of your feet and the relaxing power is coming into the toes of both of your feet at the same time. It's moving right on down into the ball, into your arches, into your heels and right on up to your ankle. Completely relaxed completely relaxed. And now feel the relaxing power moving up your legs to the knees. Relaxing all the muscles as it goes. And moving on up your legs now to your thighs and to your hips. Permeating every cell and every atom. 
And the relaxing power now comes into the fingers of both of your hands. Feel your hands relaxing. And feel the relaxing power move on up into your forearm. Relaxing your forearm. And on up now into your upper arms, just completely relaxing your upper arms. And your fingers and hands and forearms and upper arms. And now, just completely relax. And the relaxing power now moves on down into the base of your spine. Feel the warmth in the base of your spine and feel it begin to move very slowly up your spine, up your spine, up your spine and into the back of your neck and shoulder muscle. And the back of your neck and shoulder muscles are now loose and limp, loose and limp, just completely relaxed. And the relaxing power now moves on up the back of your neck and into your scalp. Relaxing your scalp. Feel your scalp relaxing. And it's now draining down into your facial muscle. Your eyes are relaxed and tired and heavy. But you keep them open and focus softly upon the screen. And your facial muscles are relaxing. Your jaw is relaxed. Allow a little space between your teeth. And your throat is relaxed. Your entire body is now relaxed all over in every way and all tension is gone from your body and mind. And as you continue to watch the screen, I want you to imagine yourself going into the screen, into the screen, into the screen. As you go down, 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 deeper and deeper into a relaxing level of mind. Deeper and deeper as I count backwards from seven to one, letting go of the physical and going down, down, down into receptive metal realms number seven deeper 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 down 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 number six deeper 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 down 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 Number five, deeper, 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 down, down, down. Number four, deeper, 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 down, down, down. Number three. Deeper, 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 down, 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 number two.
to deeper, 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 down, 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 number one. And you are now very open and receptive. Your body is going to sleep. But your mind is awake and alert on all levels. We are removing the filters that normally separate you from subconscious and superconscious awareness. And you were deep. But let's go down even deeper. Number seven. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Down, down, down. Number six. Deeper, 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 down, down, down. Number five. Deeper, 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 down, down, down. Number four. Deeper, deeper. Deeper, down, down, down. Number three. Deeper, 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 down, down, down. Number two. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Down, down, down. Number one. And you are now very, very deep. And I want to give you a self-releasing suggestion. If at any time you desire to awaken to full beta consciousness, simply count yourself up from one to five and say the words, wide awake. You're in control and can awaken yourself at any time. And now, as new impressions appear, continue to focus softly upon the center of the screen and take a deep, deep breath. And as you let it out slowly, imagine your body relaxing as it's never relaxed before. I want to explore the concept of conscious detachment a little more. Remember, Buddha said, it's your resistance to what is that causes your suffering. The idea of conscious detachment is to enjoy all the warmth and joy and happiness that life has to offer, but to detach from the negativity, allowing it to flow through you without affecting you. In detaching from fear-based emotions, you rise above the fears that are keeping you from becoming all you are capable of being. So, let's play a game called, What Would You Do If? And I'm going to share some common life situations with you, and I'd like you to mentally respond the way that you normally would. Then, very quickly, imagine how you might respond with conscious detachment and unconditional love. And remember, it's always okay to be assertive and stand up for your human rights, but it's not all right to be aggressive and step upon someone else's human rights. And it's easy to be assertive and also respond with unconditional love. Now, here's another point. In responding with detachment, you do not want to be wearing a mask. Masks are repression. Masks are fear. Also, ask yourself if you would lose self-esteem in responding this way. Never ever do anything that lowers your self-esteem. Okay, here's the first situation. 
You are waiting to be seated in a nice restaurant. Now you have reservations, and while you are standing there waiting for the hostess to get organized, another couple comes in, and they're dressed a bit more formally than you. And the hostess seats them first. That's what is. How do you respond? Okay, now here's the next situation. You're in the waiting room of your dentist's office, and another patient is also waiting for his appointment. Now he sees that you're wearing metaphysical jewelry, and since he's a born-again Christian, he begins to tell you that you're involved in evil things and that you must convert and become a born-again immediately. Now he's relentless and determined. That's what is. How do you respond? Okay, now here's the next one. Your boss has decided to sell the company to a group of Iranians who will be taking control of the operation next Monday. Now that's what is. How do you respond? Here's the next situation. Your mate admits that he or she has been having an affair for the last six months. Now they're sorry, and it's over, but your mate wants to admit it now. That's what is. How do you respond? Okay, here's the next one. You've considered how you would respond to your mate's confession, but they didn't tell you everything. You see, your mate is bisexual, and the affair was with another of their same sex. That's what is. How do you respond? Here's the next. You are at a gathering with a lot of friends. Let's say it's a party. And while you're waiting for people to come out of the bathroom, you overhear two of your friends talking about you. One is saying that they don't believe how boring you've become. The other says that your hair and clothes are the worst. Now that's what is. How would you respond?
here's the next one. You just picked up your car from the garage. The mechanic charged you $65 to fix the water pump. But by the time you get the car home, the engine is overheating again. You take the car back to the mechanic, but he refuses to do anything about it. He claims the car was fixed when you left his garage. That's what is. How do you respond? Here's the next situation. You receive a letter in the mail from your son or daughter, or if you have no children, from your best friend. And the letter says that they've joined a cult. Now, they're never going to see you again in this life. That's what is. How do you respond? And here's the next one. Your mate begins to buy and wear very strange clothing. It's the latest kinky trend from Melrose Avenue. And they love it. That's what is. How do you respond? I could come up with situations like this all day, but for just a moment, I'd like you to make up your own situation, one that would really, really upset you. Do this now. Okay. In regard to all these situations, what is, is. The distress you experience in response to these situations is a result of wanting things to be different than they are. In short, it's your resistance to what is that causes your suffering. You can spend your life attempting to change what is, but there isn't much you're going to do about it. Instead, concentrate your efforts upon what you can change. And please understand that I am not advocating that you accept anything you have the potential to change. But one of the things you can rarely change is other people. The idea is to start recognizing what you can't change, unalterable realities, and to develop detached mind. Conscious detachment is a logical matter of refusing to make something worse than it already is. Your resistance causes you to consciously suffer, and it generates very negative subconscious programming that will have to be balanced in the future. When you realize that by resisting what is, you are making the situation worse, you back off out of wisdom, not repression. The idea is to be totally involved in life, enjoying everything there is to enjoy, while detaching from the negativity. When you cease to be concerned with negativity, you are more likely to live life with nothing held back, 
free to be entirely at one with circumstances. And now, in just a moment, I'm going to wake you up. On the count of five, you will open your eyes and be wide awake, fully alert, thinking and acting with calm self-assurance and feeling glad to be alive, feeling at peace with yourself, the world, and everyone in it. So number one, you're coming on up now. Feel the lifeblood returning to your arms and legs. Number two, you're coming up a little more, a little more, and at peace with all life. Number three, you're coming on up and you sense an internal balance and harmony. Number four, recall the situation in the room. And number five, wide awake, wide awake, open your eyes and feel good. Number five, wide awake. Okay, how we doing? I'm always having people come up to me and saying, you know, Richard, a psychic told me that this is my last life. <laughs> really? You got all the fears handled, right? All the sort of things here. How many people went through every one of those and you responded just with, oh. <laughs> one, two, three liars in the room. You're at least you're truthful about the lie. Good. I had one guy who said, God, I was doing so good. I handled everything. I've been working on this so long, and I, was, I handled it all so well until you got to the part about my kid joining the cult. And he said, in my mind, I was immediately organizing paramilitary operations. And if we didn't get you, I just didn't pick out the right situations. And we're all working on the same thing. We're all working on the fears. Any reaction, any questions or comments, anything you'd like to share at this point on that? Yeah. You're one of the ones that said you did fine. I want to hear from you. You stand, please. I've got a question about this. <laughs> Being that I went through it in a very, very peaceful manner in most of all the situations, I'm wondering is this possibly pre-programming of myself to this seminar? Rather, in other words... We brainwashed you already. You're <laughs> fine. We'll have you on the street selling flowers by next weekend. <laughs> now, Scott, he's in charge of the white robes back there, and he'll have it set up, and he'll be our first convert, Scott. <laughs> is this possible? Um, I, if, you can do, if you can handle all those situations with om... Well, it was so rational. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> but it was there, it, it was rational in the mind, but when I came out of it, I'm going, I'm not that together. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you set it in to the, the next time something happens. Now, see, all of you are going to go out and create something really good to experience, right? Test yourselves. At least you have it in mind. The, the changes that you hear about, the great enlightenment, it doesn't happen that way. It's slow, bit by bit by bit. But you've got to know what you want. You have to know where you'd like to go. Does this work? Does this make your life better? Yes, it will. It will make your life better if you could respond in that way. Now, I'm not advocating passive, you know, just passive resistance. Please understand that. This is not Mahatma Gandhi's message. Uh, I come out of martial arts. That's not the way it is. This is much more. You remember the old Kung Fu show with David Carradine? He'd just sit there and he'd smile and om. And then if when the bad guys got really bad, he'd jump up and kick the shit out of them, do a thorough job, and then he's immediately back to om. <laughs> he didn't waste any time on negativity. He just did what he had to do. And that's a lot of what this is about. You just do what you have to do when the time comes. But let's not get all negative and deal with things we can't change. Let's consciously detach. I wish I hadn't said that.